Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Edward. Plus, we're on Glass Cannon, just unlocked after we got Epic Fetus unlocked. Loki's Horn. I love this room. Loki's Horn, obviously Epic Fetus. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the danger of this one is. I know that Loki's Horn Epic Fetus can sometimes cause problems, but we've had it enough times, I feel like, naturally, that it's... You know, we know what to do. You know, when you get the Loki's Horn shot, I mean, we haven't had it yet, so I'm trying to test it, but when you get the Loki's Horn shot, you want to hit down. Or perhaps an angle. This sounds weird, but you want to focus on one angle. I can't remember if you want to push them away or if you want to try to get them like... I know I recognize my diction is not very uh, cogent right now. Just forgive me. Trying to think of the best way to describe it. You shoot it out in all four directions. If you hold the direction you originally fired the shot in, all four of the crosshairs will get further away from your current origin position. There you go. So what we want to do is uh, just make sure that we're picking a direction to the extreme and not freaking out when we see four crosshairs. And I think if we do that, we should be completely fine. What I want to do... Um, look for a secret room probably was it I wanted to see if there were item rooms oh, I feel a sneeze calling for me out in the night and it's I, I sang a Canadian pop punk song and the sneeze was taken away from me and the Nobel Prize in discovering something that deprives humanity of joy goes to Northern Lion for curing sneezes thanks a lot buddy Sneeze, for a lot of people, is the best part of their day, man. Don't deny it. Sneeze is enjoyable. It's therapeutic. I mean, obviously we don't want this, so we will take this instead. And that, that's like a good test. That's like question one on your Isaac exam to be like, hey, what item should you take if there's no item rooms on a challenge? It's options or there's options. You know, there's interpretations... And also a correct answer that comes at the very end of it. Regardless. This should be very easy. I mean, I have no enduring memory of the... Uh, of the Glass Cannon Challenge. The only thing I recall about the Glass Cannon Challenge is always being like, Huh, Challenge 11 hasn't been unlocked yet. Huh, Ch uh, Challenge 11 hasn't been unlocked yet. And then all of a sudden, Challenge 11 becomes unlocked. Why not? I don't even know how this works. I don't even know if this works. At least by taking Curse Die now, we know it won't show up again in the future. This one goes all the way to Shoal. So, you know, I like to do a tail of the tape at the start of the run. You might think it's uh, because I'm, like, bereft of commentary ideas. It's actually not the case, believe it or not. I would tell you if it were. Um, fingers crossed behind my back. But uh, I, w I would, to be honest with you. Absolutely give me a vibrant bulb here. It helps me remember and conceptualize and interpret what we need to do on a run in order to succeed. So what do we need on this run? Well, more HP is a big part of it. So just by saying that, you know, it has me thinking, we probably don't need to take a deal with the devil unless there's some reasonable gain that we could get from that. Like Brimstone, Epic Fetus, obviously, I mean, maybe not obviously, but in case you've forgotten, Brimstone, Epic Fetus is insanely great. Every Epic Fetus shot becomes a Tammy's headshot. It's 10 out of 10. But HP is, is the most precious of all. So we could actually just buy Spirit Hearts and probably be okay, but it's a little bit unfun to just do that right off the bat. I don't really want a Hive Mind, though. Ace of, so we have Ace of Clubs, Two of Clubs. And then Two of Clubs first, then hold Ace of Clubs. We have Diplopia, Tarot Cloth. Um... So, right off the bat, I mean, I'll I'll accidentally uh, get rid of Diplopia when what I wanted to do was not that. We will take Restock. Another two of clubs. What I wanted to do is take Diplopia into the deal with the devil so we could steal the items no matter what. Um, but I accidentally, like a fool, blew up the reroll machine. Put myself in a weird spot. Luckily, we'll still be fine. So, you know, you probably don't want to take what they're selling you here. Dark Bum, though? <laughs> it's maybe, like, the lone exception. 
Dude, I think we gotta take it. Just for, just for curiosity's sake, you know? And I think we should take a speed upgrade. And then I think we should go make sure we get this heart up here. And if you don't pay out with the spirit heart, I'm gonna cry. All the way home. See if we can find uh, maybe an eternal heart in a second secret room as well. As long as you got a plan for the way things are going, you don't... Uh, sorry about this. You don't have to sweat it too much, you know? I Rules are made to be broken or something. The compass is really nice, actually. Would have preferred some HP, but... It was probably the wrong idea for us to take Dark Bomb, but, you know, being skilled at a game... You ever read uh, that Malcolm Gladwell book that I've totally read and I'm just pretending to not remember? Uh... Where he says, like, if it takes you 10,000 hours to become a master. Well, he doesn't say that. He says it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of anything. Which I think tells me that Malcolm Gladwell has only spent 7,500 hours writing books. Boo! I've never read any of his work. Anyway. What was I saying? So, wh what I was going to say is if you read further into that book that I'm now just completely making up the uh, content. The content of. I think he says, after playing something for 10,000 hours, and you become a master, just fart around a little bit, because it's more fun that way. So, who am I to say that the Honorable Malcolm Gladwell, Canadian-American psychologist and author, is in the wrong on this one? Answer, I'm a nobody. So I'm not going to tell... If Malcolm Gladwell says, live life to the fullest... Make mistakes, get messy. That's exactly what I'm gonna friggin' do. Take me out of this room. Krampus. I don't mind it. One more hit. Should be good to go. We don't really want Krampus' head. Uh, we don't at all want Krampus' head. Let's rephrase that. We do have restock, which has been showing up like an aggressively frequent amount of times recently but you know it does allow us to do stuff like that so i'm not gonna say no half price spirit hearts keeping the world going around here so i have to admit begrudgingly kind of thought these challenges would be a little tougher now we did screw up head trauma on our second pass but i mean come on you know it wasn't uh, an easy task moreover everything that we did wrong in that episode is predictable everything i did wrong in that episode is predictable but you could see how somebody could brain fart and forget mom's knife plus tiny planet is bad but mom's knife tiny planet and soy milk is just horrendous so we we came back strong with our second run on that one suicide king was no problem whatsoever every time i walk into those Much better. I don't like that, but I'll live with it. Give me the HP. We know we don't want what's in here because we already fought. And we'll head down to the next floor. I think what I've tried to get at is I... Uh, well, excuse me, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Potter, I have to go to the bathroom. My suspenders got tangled up in my vas def deference again. Ha ha ha. He's not just a nerd, he's a nerd that's a little bit under the weather as well. What was I saying? Yo, I had points. Please stop giving me this room, I want a blood bank. What I was trying to say, we've been doing pretty well on the challenge so far. This one, we're not really circumventing the, the whims of the challenge whatsoever. I mean, this is just what it is. Any run with Epic Fetus, you're probably going to win. Let's just, you know, if you want to put it in perspective and be like, NL, you're, you're kind of... Misrepresenting the challenge. I mean, please do keep in mind they started you with one HP on this run. Yeah, yeah, they started you with one HP and an epic fetus. You know what they start you with on an average Judas run? One HP and not epic fetus. And would you even consider Judas one of the hardest characters in the game? I don't know. You you might. That's a, I'm genuinely opening the field to conversation here. Usually, once you get a little bit of HP, you're you're smooth sailing more or less. But you know, in advance of that, it could be a little spotty. So I think we do want blank card, blank card high priestess, not really an inspirational sort of setup, but if we can get blank card, I mean here's the thing, if we get blank card emperor, we could be done this run in like two minutes, 
a little bit exaggeratory. But it wouldn't take long. Here we go. I don't want to rush through this run, but we could put another one in if that's the case. But first, we got to find the chaos, not the chaos card, the emperor card. You get the general idea. I'm very happy with dim bulb, by the way. And by dim bulb, I mean illuminated bulb. Don't think we need much statistical help here, but, you know, I'm happy to take what I can get. Thank you. And I'm eager, because I, you know, I got stars in my eyes, because I, I obviously recall we still got a little bit of greedier to go. Um, and we still got a few post-it note things to check off. But once we get those post-it note things checked off, the, you know, these challenges done, etc., 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 we're playing Isaac again. Doing this save file has been fun, and we still got a lot of, you know, we got to collect items, we got to do some of the weird, you know, Meat Boy type stuff, but that just happens throughout normal play. I'm excited, because, you know, this third save file, albeit fun, was also my penance for failing to bust off a triple digit streak. And maybe that's a little bit unrealistic, and I shouldn't be punishing myself that much for, I mean, it's a gargantuan task. I've only done this once before. Your safety is not guaranteed. However, we're doing it. And I'm not saying we're doing it in record time. But it has only been, I don't know, maybe like two or three months since we started the new save file. And two a day? This seems pretty quick. It's taken us like a, or it took us like a year to beat the second save file. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm I'm now twice as good at Isaac. Although, to be fair, it did it took us a year, but I think I was doing one video a day. So maybe my skills have hit an asymptote. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm telling you, that three digit streak is coming home. You ever see uh you know Rocky 4? You should watch it before Creed 2 comes out, because it's gonna be like a redux. But anyway, Rocky 4. Apollo Creed steps into the ring with Ivan Drago. Rocky's like, hey, Apollo, I don't understand why you step into the ring. You already achieved everything you ever wanted your whole life. I mean, you knocked me out, Apollo Creed. Uh, Rocky three, we ran shirtless on the beach together. I mean, it's the height of masculinity. What more could you want? And he goes, man, Rocky, I just got to, you don't understand, okay? So he steps into the ring. Ivan Drago, you know, punches him in the head. He... His brain goes all squirrely, and then eventually Apollo Creed dies. Yvonne Drago famously says, if he dies, he dies. Rocky enters, you know, the depths of his mind. He enters a, a period of depression. But then he comes out of it. The period of depression is me with this save file right now, even though, as mentioned for the third time, I've been enjoying it, so it's not really a great metaphor. No, we're happy with where we're at. Then he comes back and he fights Yvonne Drago. And, uh, you know, we've seen Ivan Drago, he's been training in these, like, synthetic laboratories. You know, he's punching these, like, force readers. I don't even know what to call them. He punches, like, a bag. And then it goes, like, 1,500 kilojoules of force. And then, you know, we see Bridget Nielsen. Because this movie did come out in the 1980s. Inject Ivan Drago with something. And you go, oh, I already knew I didn't like that Ivan Drago fella because of the whole... You know, he murdered the guy and then showed no remorse. I mean, it, accidents can happen, but when he says if he dies, he dies. It's a bad... It's bad form and bad manners. He should say, man, I really hope for the safe recovery of my fellow colleague, Apollo Creed. Well, we don't really want that. We don't really want that. We do want that. I can live with that. Anyway, Ivan Drago is... He's trained in synthetic ways, if you know what I mean. He's hidden for the cycle. Meanwhile, Rocky's running up Siberian mountains, and he's lifting logs, and he's doing hanging uh, sit-ups, and it's incredible. And when he gets to the top of the mountain, he goes, Drago! If you haven't seen it, you don't need to anymore. But you should, because it's, in its own unique way, a masterpiece. I'm going to blow my nose if you give me a moment, and then continue the metaphor. So the thing is, I'm Rocky, of course, because who am I going to be? Drago? You watch your mouth. 
The audience doesn't like Drago because he killed that guy. Accidentally, but again, did I mention the whole remorse part? Anyway. I'm also Apollo Creed, though. I stepped into the ring with a 100 streak. I died. And now my best friend is, you know, from beyond the grave. I'm compelling him. I'm saying, rock. You gotta finish this third save file and then go get your revenge on the 100 streak. I think it's gonna happen. In fact, I mean, I've seen the movie. I know what happens. Also has one of the greatest soundtracks in movie history. I've already, I've talked way too much about Rocky over the course of my YouTube existence. I've talked more about Rocky than I've seen Rocky. The fact that it, as a franchise, it, I'll mention it again, just the take home message to reiterate my thesis. The fact that it evolved from Oscar winning story with boxing as a metaphor to caricature of masculinity with boxing as whatever the opposite of a meta metaphor is, just a literal, you know, storytelling device. Back into, you know, a treatise on aging with boxing as a metaphor is, is fascinating to me. I'm telling you, game, you gotta hit me with some harder challenges. Otherwise, like, I'm really trying commentarily speaking here, but I'm kind of spinning my wheels, you know? Talking about Rocky for the 500th time. Could you offer me perhaps something a little bit more difficult on the Isaac level? Because as of right now, I am unchallenged. I understand not every challenge has to be a quote-unquote challenge, but simultaneously, like, you know, work with me a little here. I'm trying. It's a two-way street with the commentary. Eventually, I'll just run out of anecdotes. I'll never let myself stop talking. But eventually, I'm just going to run out of things to say, and I don't know what's going to happen there. I hope we never reach the day. So you got to gas me up with some Isaac content here. Give me that. Doesn't really matter. And we will leave. You know Ultra Hard is still going to be a tough challenge, but, I mean, we're making good time now. Compared to our uh, previous challenge runs, like the, the runs of all the challenges... I don't know if we're doing it any faster. I really, I, I seem to remember that the first time we went through challenges, this would be like 2014, but the first time we went through the challenges, I thought we did them extremely quickly. I thought we like only failed two or something like that. Mind you, that was before a couple of the really nasty ones were even added. Anyway, it's been a while. Dude, I'm losing my mind. I don't know. I feel like there should be like a, a term you can coin for this. Look at this. Two bone hearts that we can't even pick up. Um, there should be a term you should you could coin for this. I'm going to call it notification paralysis because it just sounds nice. It's got a nice cadence. I can see right now I have three notifications on Discord. That either means I've been added three times. Oh, it should take the bone heart. Or someone has given me a DM three times. And all I've been able to focus on for this whole floor is what's going on with these. Oh, it's Mathis. I'll reply to him momentarily. Turns out it wasn't urgent. <laughs> no, but for real, Mathis and I are trying to find some more stuff to collaborate on. To be real with you, like, I think I mentioned it. I can't remember if it was in Isaac or in other content, but, um, oh, we want to go this way. Uh... October was a really tough month for me, not really on a personal level, but like professionally, it was so busy. And I, I don't say that again to brag, it, but it was it was a staggering amount of responsibility in October. Plus schoolwork on top of it, so it, like, I'll admit, you know, once Darkest Dungeon ended, I kind of had to put a fourth time slot on YouTube on the back burner for a while. One second. <laughs> Now, we still got the two eyes. We still got the Slay the Spire. But I understand. People are out there. They're messaging me. Please, NL, I'm starving for some new Northern Lion content. I beg you. I'm adrift in the desert. I need some sustenance. And I'm going to give it to you. Mathison, hit me with your suggestions. Hit Mathis with your suggestions. Please, for my sanity, do not suggest Isaac races. <laughs> I love him. And I love Isaac. I'll probably be playing it until the day I die, but simultaneously. 
I just beg you for not a fourth or a third Isaac video on a daily basis. So if you got stuff you'd like to see Mathis and I play, please hit me and him up with suggestions on Twitter. I'm open to ideas. We might do some more of the Hunt Showdown, but I'll admit I put the ball in his court and I said, hey, Hunt Showdown's cool. I'd happily do a few more videos of that, no questions asked. But simultaneously, um, what, if, what if we got something like a little bit more regular going? I don't know, like a, like a co-op focus game or something along those lines. He also said something that rang true. The more collab focused I make my channel, the more enjoyable it is to do YouTube work. I feel that, my dude. <laughs> hey. It's not that I, I don't like doing YouTube. I, I love this time on a daily basis. Locked inside of my own head and also inside of my own office. And I'm not being insincere. However... I'm noticing it especially, like, I have a great appreciation for my co-hosts on Twitch. Especially, I should be more appreciative at all times, but especially when I'm sick, and I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can talk for three hours straight, and then they carry the show for a while. That's teamwork, baby. Takes a little bit of the pressure off you. Lets you, you know, be a little bit more improvisational, bounce bits off of one another, etc., etc., etc. So anyway, I'm just saying more collaborative stuff probably in the works unless something horrible happens if i kill you i do still have to kill this one right i do i hope you'll forgive me i'm not really uh doing my due diligence on this floor and the reason is it would be artificial like let's be honest we're so completely set we're gonna easily kill satan I mean, this run, I, I have no idea, and this is really a question for, you know, the makers of the game. I have no idea why the glass cannon challenge would only go here. Like, I, why not make it go all the way to the end? I don't know. Maybe there's, maybe there's thematic lore reasons. Maybe I should stop claiming, or st stop claiming. Stop complaining and learn how to love the bomb, but... Thank God I took Yara. It does not matter if you hit me. Like, it, it, it could not matter less. In fact, I think, let me test out a theory here, just while we're doing weird stuff that'll probably annoy some people. Go ahead and step on me. I want to see if a Thame will kill you before I die. The answer to the question is 1000% yes. I There's no way that I could die. I think, even if I were to bomb myself, I'm pretty sure a Thame would just get the kill regardless when the feet came down on me. I would have to actively try to dodge the feet. Oh good, we got the rules card. Anyway, that challenge, a little bit of a space filler, but it is done forever now. Unless they had a fourth save file. I rule. I remember, we failed I rule because I'm dumb. That challenge should be easy. We just have to remember we go to the Dark World. Because it's Zelda themed. Brains should be the difficult challenge. And dude, once we do Brains... Like, Brains and the Guardian are quite hard. The Guardian also, like, very, very hard. Ultra hard, though, is going to screw us. For now, though, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!